Hello, welcome to La Excellence. In our recap 2021, we are discussing monthly current affairs video. In this video, let us discuss the current affairs of February 2021. This is part one of it. PDF of this video is available in the description. If you want to write a series based on the monthly current affairs videos, you can join so by clicking on the link mentioned in the given description. First, let us discuss polity related issues. First one is Delimitation Commission. Last year, Delimitation Commission was announced for Jammu and Kashmir Union Territory and four northeastern states. As of now, Delimitation of four northeastern states was kept aside. Only the government is going forward with delimitation of Jammu and Kashmir Union Territory. Why delimitation is necessary for now? Because Jammu and Kashmir state was bifurcated into two union territories, Jammu and Kashmir Union Territory with Legislative Assembly and Ladakh Union Territory without Legislative Assembly. So, as this Union Territory has the Legislative Assembly, it needs to have territorial constituencies. That's why delimitation exercise is necessary. Delimitation Commission is appointed by President of India and it works in collaboration with Election Commission of India. Members of Delimitation Commission include Retired Supreme Court Judge, Chief Election Commissioner, Respective State Election Commissioners are members. Now let us understand certain constitutional provisions with regard to Delimitation Commission. Under Article 82, Parliament has the power to enact a Delimitation Act after every census. Under Article 170, states, all, states get divided into territorial constituencies as per the Delimitation Act after every census. Once the Act is in force, Union Government sets up Delimitation Commission and it is appointed by President of India. First Delimitation Exercise was carried out by the President in 1950-51, Delimitation Commission Act was enacted in 1952. That means, before enactment of this uh, particular provision, first delimitation was happened. Delimitation Commission have been set up four times, one in 1952, 1963, 1973 and 2002 under the Acts 1952, 62, 72 and 2002. And there is no delimitation commission after 1981 and 1991 censuses. And even after 2011 census, there is no delimitation commission because we want to equalize the population. That means, see if more population is there, more number of constituencies, yes or no? In that case, states with less population who have strictly followed the population control measures, etc., they will be at the disadvantageous position. That is one of the reasons why delimitation commissions were not, were not appointed in the latest, after latest census, that is 2011. Next issue is removal of Lieutenant Governor of Puducherry. Recently, President of India removed Kiran Bedi as the Puducherry's Lieutenant Governor and appointed Telangana's Governor, governor Tamil Sai Thundar Rajan as the Lieutenant Governor of Puducherry. Here, we have to remember this. A Governor of a state can act as Governor of another state, governor, gover, Lieutenant Governor or Administrator or Chief Commissioner of other Union Territory, LG or Chief Commissioner. Salaries and allowances of Governor are uh, paid by both the states in case of if the person is appointed as the governor for two states or three states if, if he or she is appointed for three states. Likewise, the salaries are shared and paid. Puducherry is union territory under Article 239A. Governance process of Puducherry is set up. Lieutenant Governor is appointed by President of India for a normal tenure of five years. In between, Lieutenant Governor can resign or President of India can remove him or her and replace with other person. There is no criteria that is mentioned under Indian Constitution. Now, Government of India, Government of Union Territories Act 1963, it provides for Legislative Assembly of Puducherry and Council of Ministers headed by Chief Minister to govern the Union Territory. This particular act also allows that Union Territory will be allowed by, will be administered by the President of India through Lieutenant Governor. Under Section 44 of Government of Union Territories Act 1963, LG can act in his or her discretion, but, but Council of Ministers, they can aid and advise him or her. 
in case of any difference of opinion lieutenant governor must consult refer that matter to president of india and based on the advice of president of india he or she should act the lieutenant governor was removed that is why removed by whom again by president of india next issue is also related to puducherry in puducherry president's rule was imposed earlier that's why it was in use president rule has been imposed in union territory of puducherry on whose recommendation on the recommendation of lieutenant governor after the, uh, because government has lost the power during the vote of confidence so in this context government of union territories act 1963 this is enacted by the parliament in accordance with the provisions under article 239a now let us see what are the grounds on which the president rule can be imposed in the puducherry state provisions in case of failure of constitutional machinery as per act uh, sec, uh, sorry act of 1963 not as per article 356 for normal states president's rule is imposed as per article 356 sir no but in this case it is imposed as per article 9 uh, sorry act of 1963 if the president on the receipt from administrator or otherwise also if he is satisfied that it is not the union territory is unable to be administered under the provisions of these acts then he or she can impose the president rule president may by order suspend the operation of all or any other provisions of this act for the for the uh, period of president's rule and he can make any consequential provisions necessary for administering the union territory that means it becomes completely centralized and it comes under direct control of president of india next issue is freedom of speech versus hate speech freedom of speech versus hate speech what is freedom of speech and expression under article 19a every citizen of india has freedom of speech and expression hate speech means hate speech means any kind of communication in it, it can be speech written form or behavior that that attacks or prejudices a certain group based on identity race ethnicity religion gender sexuality and it might lead to violence also hate speech threatens the equal dignity and it threatens the inclusiveness of the community under article 192 of indian constitution right to freedom of speech and expression has certain limitations reasonable restrictions because under fundamental rights rights are not absolute rights these are they have uh, reasonable restrictions that means in the constitution itself there are certain limitations for freedom of speech and expression and statutorily various sections of ipc crpc they also have certain provisions for provisions to deal with hate speech in this regard hate speech is not part of freedom of speech and expression it is not allowed in either con- it is not allowed under constitution and not allowed under various statutory provisions hate speech is not equivalent to freedom of speech and expression and freedoms are restricted rights that means these are not absolute right they have reasonable restrictions under article 192 next issue is niti ayog's governing councils meeting recent niti ayog's governor council meeting in february was not attended by few of the chief ministers including telangana's chief minister in this context importance of this governing council and what this niti ayog is and what what is the role of it we have to understand them niti ayog is a policy think tank it was established in the year 2015 by replacing planning commission this was established to promote sustainable development goals with cooperative federalism and it has taken up many initiatives including 15 year road map amrit project 7 year vision plan strategy plan action plan atal innovation mission digital mission likewise many initiatives are implemented many initiatives are suggested not implemented suggested and monitored by niti ayog niti ayog it doesn't have any provisions any authority to provide the funding and earlier planning commission was playing important role in implementation now niti ayog is not part of implementation niti ayog doesn't have any financial powers it is just a think tank headed by the prime minister it comprises a governing council very important governing council which includes chief ministers of all states 
chief ministers of union territories with the legislative assemblies lieutenant governors of union territories delhi and puducherry are excluded from this and it has regional councils uh, th these regional councils they consist of chief ministers of the states and union territories in that region governing council is the apex body this has membership from various bodies other ministries government officials these are all part in 2015 first official meeting of niti ayog's governing council was held this is uh, the pri premier decision making body under niti ayog under niti ayog this is the decision making body next issue is sedition and disha ravi's case what is the meaning of sedition and what is disha ravi's case so during farmers protest certain group of people has prepared toolkit for protest in this case on this person on this woman there's a case filed sedition case was filed supreme court has said that sedition need to be addressed and understood by the effects of the measure taken not by the mere activity itself that is why supreme court has ordered the release of this person disharavi in this context let us understand what is sedition sedition is a crime defined under section 124a of ipc it defines that sedition is an offence committed when any person by words either spoken or written or by signs or by visible representation or through any other means brings hatred or contempt or excites the attempts to excite disaffection towards the government established by law in india is known as sedition disaffection means disloyalty it can bring in violence this particular act its sedition provision it was introduced before independence sedition section on sedition is introduced by the britishers to the ipc british rulers used this particular provision to muzzle the dissent of the freedom struggle freedom fighters so this particular section was first used against bal gangadhar tilak in one of the prominent freedom fighters after independence in 1948 there were discussions whether to keep sedition in the constitution or not according to the consensus sedition as a word is not part of constitution in 1951 at the time the governor has brought in an amendment to article 191a and it has placed reasonable restrictions on right to freedom of speech and expression in 1974 indira gandhi government brought in and makes 124a section 124a as the cognizable offense and if we look at the punishment rates or the conviction rates under section 124a conviction rates are very very low 3% only in this context it is said that law commission and other committees have suggested to use this provision sparingly only when it is necessary they have not asked to remove they asked to use this sparingly but recently supreme court and our cj has asked even after 75 years of independence this colonial law which suppresses the freedom was not removed it is against the ideals of indian constitution why are we not removing it why parliament is not considering it is the question from our cji there are many supreme court judgments including kedarnath singh judgment alvi versus state of kerala balwan singh versus state of punjab in all these cases supreme court has clearly said that mere act let's say slogans writing mere act is not equivalent to sedition sedition needs to be substantive it should lead to impact on the ground then only we can call it as sedition otherwise don't use it sparingly it is against the fundamental rights of the individuals that is that is the gist of various supreme court judgments next issue is right to dissent versus right to commute supreme court in shaheen bagh protest case has said that these two rights needs to be balanced in a democracy right to dissent is important peaceful protest as part of right to dissent brings in quality that is true but fundamental rights are not absolute they don't live in isolation they have reasonable restrictions they exist if they exist with mutual respect that means protests can happen 
but they cannot indefinitely occupy the public spaces which obstructs the right to commute in this context it's the responsibility of the administration to prevent the encroachment of public places indefinitely indefinite uh, indefinite public encroachment is wrong it violates the fundamental rights again this is a fundamental right this is also a fundamental right both needs to be balanced harmonious existence needs to be there no fundamental right these fundamental rights they ex- they don't exist in absoluteness they don't exist in isolation they exist in mutual coexistence next issue is parliamentary privileges and delhi assembly related issue recently delhi assembly's peace and harmony committee has summoned facebook ceo uh, india ajit mohan this person has went to supreme court and asked so this case has already been investigated by various investigative agencies why this particular uh, committee is requesting us to come and give the explanation supreme court has said that your function is to make the laws why are you intervening in this yes riots have happened already central bureau everyone they are investigating why are you again requesting this don't use this for political purpose like that supreme court has said that but it is criticized as violation of separation of powers and fundamental rights of india every individual has the right to know yes or no in that context as the elected representatives they can seek and summon the person to give explanation parliament has the power legislature has the power under legislative privileges and courts cannot question them under article 105 and 194 separation of power that means judiciary is intervening in legislature's role so that is why it has been criticized legislative assembly they they need not involve in day to day functioning but this is an important issue as the representatives of the people they have the responsibility to tell the people that this is what has happened this is what we are doing yes or no in this context law and order police etc they come under central list not under state list then why the delhi government through delhi legislature is involving that is the question of judiciary but in a democracy yes parliamentary privileges exist these provisions are not part of delhi legislative assembly true but then they are representatives and this is an important issue why can't it ask the person to give explanation that is the criticism again is this next let us understand governance related aspects first one is little andaman islands niti aayog has proposed sustainable development of little andaman island vision document according to this document it proposes for sustainable and holistic development of 680 square kilometers of fragile andaman and little andaman island andaman island region environmentalists say that this region is more vulnerable this region is vulnerable to vulnerable and is home to many endangered species any kind of developmental activity might endanger that is the issue when from our geography point of view let us understand the various features of this this is great andaman island little andaman islands cocoa channel ab ab the great andaman islands we have cocoa islands which belongs to myanmar great andaman island in this we have baran island which is the active volcano and we have little andaman between great and little andaman we have a water passage known as duncan passage and these islands are located in andaman sea between andaman islands and nicobar islands we have 10 degree longitude which is known as 10 degree channel this island is part of little andaman group and it is famous this particular one is the fourth largest island in andamans and it has largest settlement of hut bay hut bay so this is biodiversity wise it is very important these project they might affect the biodiversity of the place that is one of the concerns but little andaman and its location is important next issue is pangongso pangongso is located in union territory of ladakh pangongso lake two third is located in china side that is uh, that side of aksai chin and one third is located in india side whatever is located on india side this is divided as various fingers this bent area is divided as various fingers eight finger regions are there now this is lac that is what india's claim is but china says 
this is till finger 4 we have the control that means from finger 8 to finger 4 this region is a disputed region pla is holding the ground recently lhc encroachment has happened pla that is people's liberation army of china is holding the ground that is why it is news pangong so lake it is world's highest salt water lake why saline lake because the in, uh, inlet to this lake is only through the glacial melt plus more evaporation there is no outlet from this that is why it is saline next issue is delf island near jaffna peninsula Jaffna Peninsula is the northernmost peninsula region of Sri Lanka. This is famous for LTTE, earlier LTTE's activism. Between India and Jaffna Peninsula, we have a strait known as Park Strait. And on the south side, we have Gulf of Mannar. On the north side, we have Park Bay. In Park Strait region, we have an island known as Delf Island. The south, south of this, we have Kachatibu Island. Kachatibu Island. We know that. Kachitivu Island group is a is disputed territory between India and Sri Lanka. This is located exactly on the international maritime, maritime line between India and Sri Lanka. That's why both claim this island. Now, why this Delft Island is in news? Because China is establishing various uh, investments and infrastructural projects in this particular project, including oil exploration. And this is very, very near to India's strategic position. That is why it is in use. Def is the largest three, largest of the three islands. And it is closest to, to Rameshwaram of our Tamil Nadu. Between the two is we have Kachatibu Islands. Def and Rameshwaram, we have Kachatibu Islands. It is in conflict between India and Sri Lanka from 1974. Waters around these islands are area of contest and rivalry between Tamil Nadu and Jaffna fishermen because for fisher, fisher, fishing rights. And now the new issue is along with the fishing rights, we have oil and natural gas deposits. That is why this region is much more important now. Next issue is impact of Indian Ocean Dipole on the rainfall in Meghalaya. India's Meghalaya is one of the highest rainfall receiving states in the world. Chirapunji, Masin Rome areas are located in Meghalaya region. Now, Indian Ocean Dipole, this phenomena, this can lead to excessive rainfall in one, one period and very less rainfall in other seasons. Positive Indian Ocean Dipole can give rise to more cyclones in Arabian Sea region. Negative Indian Ocean Dipole, it accumulates and combines with the effects of El Nino and gives rise to severe droughts in the Indian subcontinent. First of all, let us understand the positive phase of Indian Ocean Dipole. This is our Indian Ocean region, yes or no? In the Indian Ocean region, if the western side has more warmer, temp more warmer water as compared to the eastern side, here rainfall happens in the Arabian Peninsula and Arabian Sea, etc. During positive phase of Indian Ocean Dipole, we receive more water, more rainfall. In contrast, during the negative phase of Indian Ocean Dipole, this region is cooler than normal. This region is warmer than normal. Then with, when warm waters are there, clouds form there. So there due to convection rainfall happens, this region would be dry. That is why drought conditions occur. In Meghalaya, negative phase of Indian Ocean Dipole. Negative phase of Indian Dipole leads to drought-like condition. When it is linked to El Nino, El Nino, it can further enhance the drought-like conditions. So, Meghalaya region also gets impacted due to Indian Ocean Dipole and El Nino kind of El Nino weather systems. Next issue is National Monsoon Mission. It was launched by Ministry of Earth Sciences in 2012. It is to improvise the forecasting skills by setting up state-of-the-art dynamic prediction systems. This National uh, Monsoon Mission, it builds the Working partnership between academic and research institutions, it predicts using high-performing computers. So, in this context, we have to understand that India receives rainfall during two monsoons. One is summer monsoon, second one is winter monsoon. In your geography, try to recollect what is summer monsoon and what is winter monsoon, how these two monsoons impact and how these two uh, function, what is muscarine high, what is maritime continental heat source, what is Siberian heat sink? Please understand all these words. 
ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಇಶ್ಯೂ ಇಸ್ ಮಹಾಬಾಹು ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಪುತ್ರ ಪ್ರಾಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಬ್ರಿಡ್ಜ್ ಪ್ರಾಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ಅಂಡರ್ ಭಾರತ್ ಮಾಲಾ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಫೌಂಡೇಶನ್ ಸ್ಟೋನ್ ವಾಸ್ ಲೈಡ್ ಲೈಡ್ ಬೈ ಅವರ್ ಪ್ರೈಮ್ ಮಿನಿಸ್ಟರ್ ಫಾರ್ ಎ ಫೋರ್ ಲೇನ್ ಬ್ರಿಡ್ಜ್ ದಟ್ ಓವರ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಪುತ್ರ ರಿವರ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ದುಬ್ರಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಫುಲ್ಬರಿ ಏರಿಯಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಸ್ಸಾಂ ದಿಸ್ ಕನೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಮೇಘಾಲಯ ರೀಜನ್ ವಿತ್ ಅಸ್ಸಾಂ ಅಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ ರೆಡ್ಯೂಸಸ್ ದಿ ಟೈಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಟ್ರಾವೆಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕನೆಕ್ಟ್ ದುಬ್ರಿ ಇನ್ ಅಸ್ಸಾಂ ಟು ಫುಲ್ಬ್ರಿ ತೂರಾ ಅಂಡ್ ಅದರ್ ಏರಿಯಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೇಘಾಲಯ ಅಲಾಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ದಿಸ್ ಫೌಂಡೇಶನ್ ಸ್ಟೋನ್ ವಾಸ್ ಲೈಡ್ ಡೌನ್ ಫಾರ್ ಟೂ ಲೇನ್ ಬ್ರಿಡ್ಜ್ ಆನ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಪುತ್ರ ರಿವರ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ಮಜೂಲಿ ಮಜೂಲಿ ಇಸ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಲಾರ್ಜೆಸ್ಟ್ ಫ್ರೆಶ್ ವಾಟರ್ ಐಲ್ಯಾಂಡ್ಸ್ ವೆರಿ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಬ್ರಿಡ್ಜ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕನೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ದಿ ದಿಸ್ ಕನೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಅಸ್ಸಾಂ ರೀಜ್ ಅಸ್ಸಾಮ್ಸ್ ಜೋರತ್ ರೀಜನ್ಸ್ ಟು ಮಜೂಲಿ ಅಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಒನ್ ಮೋರ್ ಪೋರ್ಟಲ್ ಪೋರ್ಟಲ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅ ಸೆಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ನಾವಿಗೇಷನ್ ಇನ್ಫಾರ್ಮೇಷನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಸಿಂಗಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಸಿಂಗಲ್ ಸ್ಟಾಪ್ ಸೊಲ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಟು ಪ್ರೊವೈಡ್ ಇನ್ಫಾರ್ಮೇಷನ್ ರಿಲೇಟೆಡ್ ಟು ನಾವಿಗೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ರಿವರ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದೇರ್ ನೇಚರ್ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದೀಸ್ ರಿವರ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಸೋರ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ವೇರಿಯಸ್ ನ್ಯಾಷನಲ್ ವಾಟರ್ ವೇಸ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ವೈ ಮಹಾಬಾಹು ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಪುತ್ರ ಪ್ರಾಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಫೋರ್ ಲೇನ್ ಬ್ರಿಡ್ಜ್ ಓವರ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಪುತ್ರ ರಿವರ್ ಇನ್ ಅಸ್ಸಾಂ ದಟ್ ಕನೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಅಸ್ಸಾಂ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ವಿತ್ ಮೇಘಾಲಯ ಲೆಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಬ್ರೀಫ್ಲಿ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಪುತ್ರ ರಿವರ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಪುತ್ರ ರಿವರ್ ಈಸ್ ನೋನ್ ಅಸ್ ಸ್ಯಾಂಗ್ಪೋ ಇನ್ ಟಿಬೆಟ್ ಇಟ್ ರೈಸಸ್ ಇನ್ ಚೆಮುಗ್ಯಾಂಗ್ ಗ್ಲೇಷಿಯರ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಕೈಲಾಸ್ ರೇಂಜಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಮರಿಯಮ್ ಲಾ ಪಾಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಸಪರೇಟ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಸಪರೇಟ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಮಾನಸ್ ಸರೋವರ್ ಲೇಕ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಲೆಂತ್ ಇಸ್ ಟೂ ಥೌಸಂಡ್ ನೈನ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟಿ ಕಿಲೋಮೀಟರ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ಸ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಫೋರ್ ಟೂ ಲ್ಯಾಕ್ ಫಾರ್ಟಿ ಥೌಸಂಡ್ ಕಿಲೋಮೀಟರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಬೇಸಿನ್ ಏರಿಯಾ ಸ್ಕ್ವೇರ್ ಕಿಲೋಮೀಟರ್ ಬೇಸಿನ್ ಏರಿಯಾ ಅಂಡ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಟ್ರಿಬ್ಯೂಟ್ ರೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ರಿವರ್ ಇನ್ಕ್ಲೂಡ್ ಸುಬರ್ಣಶ್ರೀ ಕಮೆಂಗ್ ಧನಶ್ರೀ ದಿಹಾಂಗ್ ಲೋಹಿತ್ ತೀಸ್ತಾ ತೋರ್ಸಾ ಮಾನಸ್ ಭೂರಿ ದಿಹಾಂಗ್ ಎಟ್ಸೆಟ್ರಾ ಇಟ್ ಫ್ಲೋಸ್ ಥ್ರೂ ಟಿಬೆಟ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಅಂಡ್ ಬಾಂಗ್ಲಾದೇಶ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ಸ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಲಾರ್ಜೆಸ್ಟ್ ಡೆಲ್ಟಾ ಅಲಾಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ಗಂಗಾ ರಿವರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಡೆಲ್ಟಾ ಈಸ್ ನೋನ್ ಅಸ್ ಸುಂದರ್ಬನ್ಸ್ ಸುಂದರ್ಬನ್ ಈಸ್ ಫೇಮಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಮ್ಯಾಂಗ್ರೂ ಫಾರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವೇರಿಯಸ್ ಬಯೋಡೈವ ವೇರಿಯಸ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಬಯೋಡೈವರ್ಸಿಟಿ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಇಶ್ಯೂ ಇಸ್ ಚಿತ್ತ ಉರಾಲಿ ಚಿತ್ತ ಪ್ರೈಮ್ ಮಿನಿಸ್ಟರ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಲೈಡ್ ಡೌನ್ ಫೌಂಡೇಶನ್ ಸ್ಟೋನ್ ಫಾರ್ ಡೆವಲಪ್ಮೆಂಟಲ್ ವರ್ಕ್ ಆಫ್ ಚಿತ್ತ ಉರ ಲೇಕ್ ಇನ್ ಫೆಬ್ರವರಿ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಒನ್ ದಟ್ಸ್ ವೈಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ನ್ಯೂಸ್ ಚಿತ್ತ ಉರ ಜೀಲ್ ಆರ್ ಚಿತ್ತ ಉರ ಲೇಕ್ ಈಸ್ ನೋನ್ ಆಸ್ ಅಸ್ಟ್ವರ್ಕ್ ರಾ ಜೀಲ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಲೇಕ್ ಲೊಕೇಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಉತ್ತರ ಪ್ರದೇಶ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಸಿಚುವೇಟೆಡ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಸಿಚುವೇಟೆಡ್ ಫ್ಯೂ ಕಿಲೋಮೀಟರ್ಸ್ ಅವೇ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಬೈರಾ ಸಿಟಿ ಸ್ಮಾಲ್ ರಿವರ್ ನೋನ್ ಆಸ್ ತೇರಿ ನದಿ ಇಟ್ ಫ್ಲೋಸ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ದಿಸ್ ಲೇಕ್ ಚಿತ್ತ ಉರ ಜೀಲ್ ಈಸ್ ಅ ಹಿಂದೂ ಪಿಲಿಗ್ರಿಮೇ ಸೈಟ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಹಿಂದೂ ಪಿಲಿಗ್ರಿಮೇ ಸೈಟ್ ಅಕಾರ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಲೋಕಲ್ ಲೆಜೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ಅಸ್ಟ್ವರ್ ಕಮುನಿ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ಗುರಿ ಆಫ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ ಆಫ್ ಜನಕ್ ಯೂಸ್ ಟು ಲಿವ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಇನ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಆಶ್ರಮ್ ದಿ ಏರಿಯಾ ಬಿಸೈಡ್ ದ ಲೇಕ್ ಈಸ್ ನೋನ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿ ಸೈಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಲೆವೆಂತ್ ಸೆಂಚುರಿ ಬ್ಯಾಟಲ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ಹಿಂದೂ ಕಿಂಗ್ ಸಹೇಲ್ ದೇವ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮುಸ್ಲಿಂ ಇನ್ ವೇಡ ಗಾಜಿ ಸಯೀದ್ ಸಲಾರ್ ಮಸೂದ್ ಸೊ ರೀಸೆಂಟ್ಲಿ our prime minister has laid down foundation stone for developmental work of chitaura lake in up that is why it was a news next issue
it exhibits earlier traces of human life in india and provides evidence of stone age starting at uh, acheulean times it is a unesco world heritage site it consists of seven hills and it is over 750 rock shelters are there distributed over 10 kilometers area on the Vind- vindhyan range very important vindhyan mountain range painting some of the bimbetka rock shelters they feature prehistoric cave paintings and earliest are about 10000 years old corresponding to mesolithic period mesolithic period has has seen the largest painting activity most of these paints are done in red and white on the cave walls not on the uh, roof on the cave walls there are multiple themes that were represented in these in this painting such as singing dancing hunting other common day to day activities oldest of the cave paintings belongs to 12000 years old bimbetka caves very very important they show both historic and, and prehistoric times next issue is khalistan movement recently during the farmer protests central government has alleged that some of the farmers are motivated by the khalistani movement groups what is this khalistan movement it is a six separatist movement it seeks to create homeland for six by establishing a sovereign country known as khalistan in the punjab region of pakistan and india such state was existent between 1709 to 1914 and after that british annexed so for for demanding khalistan and during the pre independent time we have this famous movement known as singh sabha movement this was found founded at amritsar in 1873 with two fold aim one to bring in modern education to six for that khalsa schools were established two to counter the proselytizing activities of christian missionaries brahma samajas arya samajas and muslim mulavis they try to stop all these groups as an offshoot of singh sabha movement akali movement was formed which is also known as gurudwara reform movement they have demanded under singh sabha movement they demanded that sikh gurudwaras needs to be need to be liberated from the control of corrupt mahants and the british government has brought in a, a, an act to uh, to administer the sikh gurudwaras for that there were few committees that were formed we are going to discuss that in today's current affairs only next after the independence how khalistan movement moved forward after partition of india independence independence was not fully enjoyed by them f- fully joyful for them they want their traditional lands back which are lost lost to pakistan and there was huge mass exodus from the pakistani side in this context punjabi subha movement was launched in 1955 under akali dal a sikh dominated political party they thought that punjab ling uh, punjab needs to be uh, divided on the linguistic basis based on that punjab and haryana himachal pradesh punjab at the time punjab was divided into punjab haryana and himachal pradesh himachal pradesh was formed as a union territory initially after that it was given statehood but andhra haryana and punjab was divided based on the linguistic basis after that anandpur sahib resolution this has reignited the passions of sikhne six and they asked for khalistan movement so this khalistan movement we might have already read about operation blue star under which some of the separatist groups as they were taking shelter in the amritsar's gurudwara our armed forces entered they fought with these armed groups but then during the process it has seen the monument has seen the losses cultural loss in this context we know that after that indira gandhi was assassinated many group many separatist groups were declared as terror groups so now khalistan movement is not stronger in punjab region it is at the subdued situation but in many in many areas Uh, especially in canada and few other countries it is still active certain groups they pr- they are promoting this particular demand for khalistan next issue is a home kingdom recently our prime minister made visit to siv uh, siv sagar region this this was the capital of a home kingdom for 6 centuries that is for 6 600 years a homes migrated to brahmaputra valley fertile valley brahmaputra fertile valley from present day myanmar a home kingdom was found by first a home king chao lung suikapa 
this person has established a home kingdom in the 30th century by integrating various tribal groups of the region so kaipa was successful in assimilation of different communities and tribes that's why he is referred as bor assam he is referred as architect of greater assam or bor assam soikapa a home dynasty governed the region for 6 centuries till till it was annexed annexed by britishers and it coexisted during the sultan uh, delhi sultanate period mughal period this kingdom laid the foundations for present day assamese culture tradition art and culture a home kingdom very important next issue is centenary celebrations of siromani gurudwara prabandhak recently centenary of sri nankana sahib mazaka it was popularly known as saka nankana sahib it was marked this agitation was a big leaf in gurudwara reform movement this campaign gurudwara reform movement or which is also known as akali movement was a six long drawn campaign between 1920 to 1925 for the liberation of gurudwaras from the priestly class mahans this is an offshoot of akali movement is an was an offshoot of singh sabha movement the properties and places of worships of singhs sorry six they were transferred to udai mahans by britishers this was criticized by the six and they led this particular movement later britishers they have handed over the pilgrimage places sik gurudwaras to this siromani prabandhak siromani gurudwar prabandhak committees which are known as sgpcs they came into existence in november 20 a month after sik removed the partial restrictions on dalit rights inside golden temple in amritsar and it started gurudwara reform movement uh, which was aimed at taking the possession of historical gurudwaras after this movement siromani gurudwara prabandhak committees after this movement in 2020 sorry 1925 britishers granted the control over gurudwaras to these committees so that's why 100 years of centenary celebrations next issue is chauri chaura centenary celebration where is this place chauri chaura is a place in up town in gorakhpur region of up on the occasion of centenary postal postal stamp was released on this event by our prime minister in 1922 this town has witnessed violent incident a, a large crowd set fire the police station killed 22 policemen why they killed that was the time of non cooperation movement we were protesting then gandhi ji launched this non cooperation movement against the government it involves a swadeshi movement peaceful boycott of foreign goods etc during the winter of this volunteers of congress and khilafat movement they combined a national volunteer corps khilafat movement is was a pan islamic force launched in 1999 after britishers dissolved ottoman khalifa position gandhi ji integrated khilafat movement with non cooperation movement during that period this chaura chauri incident happened gandhi ji stopped ncm suddenly many many leaders criticized it but gandhi ji said this kind of violence is easy to be suppressed by the britishers and we are not mature enough to go for such large scale protest that was the statement by the gandhi ji at the time next issue is maharaja suhel dev Prime Minister Modi has laid down foundation stone of Maharaja Suhail Dev Memorial and developmental work of Chittaur Lake. We already discussed what is Chittaur Lake, where is it located. In this context, let us understand who is this Maharaja Suhail Dev. It is said that in the 11th century, the ruler of Shravasti, the present-day Uttar Pradesh Baroch area, he has defeated and killed Ghaznavid General Ghazi Syed Salar Mansud. That's why. this pers- this particular event is mentioned in a historical novel known as mirat e masudi mirat e masudi this is written by abd ur rahman abd ur rahman chisti abd ur rahman chisti has written this during the mogal emperor's period in this particular book this particular event is mentioned next let us understand society and social issues first issue is me too movement and priya ramani case Priya Ramani journalist she has filed a case against MK MJ Akbar who was a former union minister and editor and MJ Akbar he has filed a case against her 
saying she is trying to defame him in this case delhi high court has said that it has acquitted this journalist priya ramani in a criminal defamation case brought against her by former union minister and editor mj akbar and this can be seen as vindicate vindication for me to movement what is this what is this me to movement it's an international movement against the sexual harassment or sexual abuse committed by powerful men in society many women they don't they won't come up they won't come forward and uh, complain against this because of various constraints me to movement is trying to bring forward such incidents forward through social media through the use of media me to movement important next let us understand security related issues first issue is smart fences recently alternative smart wall was proposed in usa during trump's period he has promised to build a physical wall along mexico and usa border now it is replaced with surveillance technology there are so many technologies available now so the present government says alternative smart wall will be built instead of the physical wall such walls are known as such technologies are known as smart fences in india we also have smart fencing projects two pilot projects are there one along the pakistan border two along the indo bangladesh indo bangladesh border and a comprehensive integrated border management system this is important cibms comprehensive integrated border management system so two pilot projects were completed this involves deployment of range of technologies surveillance technology such as thermal imagers infrared laser based intruder alarms aerostats aerial surveillance so sonars radars so likewise there are many technologies that are used for border surveillance bold qit border electronically dis- dominated qrt interception technique under cibms is used along bangladesh border in dubri district of assam in this context smart fencing technologies and smart fencing is there in india other countries in many other countries smart fencing is the new method of border management now next issue is trojan horse cyber threat what is this netwire is the recent uh, trojan horse that is in news into it was first surfaced in 2012 this is known as this is known as trojan horse because it enters into our system without our knowledge this malware can lock the keystrokes and comp- comprises the passwords this malware it does two things what are, what are they one it extracts the data that means it steals the data it infiltrates the system that means even antivirus softwares it cannot detect it and it is off the shelf malware that means it is not customized like pegasus it is simply prepared and sold that's it such kind of malware off the shelf malware next issue is defense modernization and internal security fund recently 15th finance commission has proposed to set aside some part of the funding for defense modernization and internal security it is suggested because of the recent lac incidents union government constitute public account of india from that dedicated funding should be there for the next 5 years 2 lakh 38 thousand crore rupees is necessary for defense modernization and internal security maintenance that is why 15th finance commission has asked to strengthen the defense condition through this uh, through a separate fund last issue is urgent arjun da- battle tankers recently our prime minister has handed over indigenously developed arjun main battle tanks to the indian army this arjun main battle tank project it was initiated under drdo and it it is one of the important source of combat vehicle said state of the art tank with superior fire power high mobility and excellent protection facilities are there features of arjun battle tanks include it has indigenously developed 120 mm main rifle gun fitted with it and it has secondary weapon systems also it has computer control integrated fire control system is there these are some of the features of arjun battle tankers these are indigenously designed and built in india these are the issues of february 2021 part 1 thank you very much all the very best